Great to have you with us. First story we're all going to talk about is the doomsday cult mom. And today, getting word, apparently there was a little problem at the jail where Lori Vallow-Daybell having a conversation with her attorney, you know, a privileged conversation. The whole thing got recorded. Here's the latest from KTSU in Utah. Well, the visitation rooms in Rexburg are very similar to the rooms here in Davis County. The difference is here in Davis County, they say they have not gotten any complaints. They take attorney-client privilege seriously. The fact of the matter is, no matter how you feel about Lori Vallow or the case involving her missing kids, she still has a right to a private conversation with her attorney. This is video of defense attorney Mark Means getting ready to visit his client, Lori Vallow, her first night in an Idaho jail cell. But now the Madison County Jail admits it may not have been that night, but one of the conversations that took place between the two of them was supposed to remain private, but didn't. It was recorded. It's upsetting that it happens in such a high profile case when there's so much at stake. Lori's attorney now understands that the jail's quote unquote mistake could benefit his client. At the very least, he wants her bond to be reduced. It, it's certainly not grounds to have the case thrown out or anything like that, but it, it could give the attorney some, some basis to claim that uh, holding her in jail just isn't working out. Prosecutors say the conversation was recorded on accident because of new coronavirus policies and quickly deleted. The jail did not offer an explanation to Fox 13, only saying the case is now under investigation. I think there's reason to be suspect about the conduct of the jail in this case. The jail says the room where the recorded conversation took place looks very similar to this. The visitation rooms at the Davis County Jail in Utah, where these phones are not connected to a recording. We are all about respecting the rights of the individuals who are in our care and custody. So they're having an attorney client visit, then that conversation is not recorded. If this case goes before a judge, it would be the fourth time Lori Vallow has asked for her bond to be reduced. It is set right now at $1 million. Wow, this could be a huge, huge problem, or maybe not. Let's bring everyone back in. Seema, your thoughts about this? I mean, th that's that you don't do that. I understand mistakes can be made. That this is one of those mistakes you don't ever want to make. Uh, it's jail, Vinny. It's not NASA. Okay, I, these <laughs> mistakes happen all the time. I mean, who do you think is running the show over there? Especially now. I mean, think about how much of the staff may be working at a reduced capacity. People are sick. People are tense. People are stressed out. And sorry, but Lori Vallow is the least of their problems. The message was quickly deleted. Uh, I don't think this is any harm. I think, in my opinion, it's analogous to, let's say, uh, a legal document and there's maybe the wrong date. So then the lawyer in open court will make an oral amendment. No harm, no foul, no big deal. I, I, I think the defense will make a huge deal out of it, though, Julie. I mean, you know, maybe ultimately nothing happens here, but they are going to jump up and down and scream. You know what, Vinny, they might. And you know what, let them. Let them cry. Boo-hoo, Lori Vallow. I don't think anybody's going to feel one bit bad. Uh, I'm with Seema on this one. At the end of the day, I think it's what we call in the law de minimis, something, you know, such little insignificance. Okay, accidents happen. Do, was there some great revelation that came from this? No, we could have only hoped that somebody would have discovered where these kids are and been able to go and rescue them if they're still hopefully alive. Uh, but no, that didn't happen. And, and certainly, Vinny, you're right. Defense counsel is going to try to argue, argue, and um, make sure they, they no one was doing this for some unlawful reason or with a nefarious purpose in mind. But at the end of the day, um, I, I think that it was an accident. Things happened. They deleted it promptly. No harm, no foul. <clears throat> All right, let's just hope it doesn't leak anywhere because that hey, becomes Vinny, a huge real, problem. Real quick, now, um, go ahead, Ted. Uh, yeah, on that, the other thing that the defense was worried about or upset about was the fact that they had to meet with their client, Lori Vallow, uh, in between the, the glass with the phones and that she couldn't see some of the discovery. She couldn't, uh, they couldn't go back and forth. That's another part of their argument to have a bail hearing to reduce the bail, saying that the bail's way too high anyway for the charge that she now faces, not the ones that are probably coming. And that, I think there is some legitimacy. She's got a preliminary hearing coming up next month, supposedly, if it happens. Um, that, I think, is a more powerful argument than they accidentally recorded a phone call. 
Now, uh, her grand, the grandparents of JJ, uh, one of the missing children, uh, spoke with Court TV, spoke with Ted uh, about Lori being in jail. Let's take a listen. Every minute of every day we're missing JJ. Um, we, we want this resolved. It, the fact that it could be so easily remedied at any minute yeah. um, it, it's just infuriating because it's just, it, it's, it's such indignation the way Lori is treating this as to anybody that cares for the kids, you know, Colby, um, Annie, um, um, you know, me, the Larry, the whole family, our, the, our family, JJ's brothers and, and all Cousins. everybody yeah. that they're just, it's a slap in the face. Every time Lori, you know, does it every minute of every day where Lori, it's not saying something, it's a slap in the face, but uh, and I understand that that's what she wants. So, yeah, she's getting it. It's working. Yeah. What What do you mean that's what she wants? What does she want, do you believe? Who knows? She's she nutty wants, as a bat. She wants attention. Yeah. However, this is probably the worst possible way you can get attention. But it's all about the her narcissist um personality or attitude or whatever you want to call it um it, it there's no purpose in this and there's no purpose other than if she did something to the kids and she cannot produce them and she doesn't want to say then there's there's a you know but we're not we're le we're we don't still go there we're still thinking he's alive and tyler's alive and and we're gonna get him back Uh, it's amazing, Ted. They're still they're still holding out hope, aren't they? That that JJ is around and and they'll get to see their grandson again. Yeah, they are. Uh, they're not delusional by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, they said, "Hey, if if you've killed them, let us know. Let us move on and move to this next stage." But of course, until they have proof one way or another. They are keeping up hope. There's new billboards up um, in Idaho Falls. They're very excited about that. They need the public's help. And, yes, they're keeping hope alive. Yeah, I, and, Julie, I always come back to that, and I wonder, you know, is there someone else that was involved in their movement, their religion, their group, their cult, whatever it is, that may know exactly where the children are, and maybe there's a slight chance that, hey, the kids are tucked away somewhere, you know, being held out of the spotlight away from everyone else. Are you holding on to any hope, Julie? You know, I, I think the optimist in me is, Vinny, I think everyone in America who's watching this case is hoping and those who are, uh, you know, uh, people of faith are praying that these children are still alive somewhere. And, and they very well could be. I mean, we've seen stranger things happen. I mean, all of us here think about the cases we've covered over the years and where kidnappings take place and, and, and children and adults manage to survive and then um, and then live and they're found. So I think we can only hope. I, I have zero, zero faith in Lori Vallow, Daybell, cult mom, uh, because we know she is still on this day, April the 9th, defying that court order that's been in place since January to produce her children. And even at her bail reduction hearing date that's set for next Friday, uh, you can bet the argument will not be she wants to be out so she can help with the search and produce the kids. You can bet your bottom dollar on that one, Vinny. Vinny, can I just jump in? I yeah. feel like there's zero urgency in this case to find the children. I'm not going to pick on certain people, but every everybody I hear speak out about this, everybody seems kind of relaxed. Nobody seems urgent. Not the lawyers, not the judge. Like nobody's looking. Whoa, whoa. I, I, you, everybody's telling me that there are people out there, federal and local law enforcement, looking for these kids. I am not feeling the urgency from this story. Mm. I, I think one mm. of the issues, though, is, is Yellowstone, Ted. Isn't it Yellowstone that one of the places they want to search is Yellowstone, and it's covered with feet of snow. They're waiting for it to melt. 
Right, and in, in that case, of course, the kids are dead. Um, that Yes, that would be a recovery, but that's where they're going as soon as the snow melts. They're going to search the areas of the park. They've asked people that were at the park when that photo was taken and this photo was taken to, to share their photos during that time period with the, uh, with the FBI so that they can sort of cross-reference, look for things in the backgrounds, um, and, and that's their focus on this end. The other part of the investigation that Seem is talking about, if, if they're alive... Are they rattling doors? Are, are they going up to the people that are in the edges of this cult and shaking them down? Because obviously nothing's happening with Lori Vallow, because that, I think, is the key. If they're alive, someone's taking care of them, and it's one of these nuts. Yeah, that's right. That's mm -hmm. exactly it. Lori Vallow, last January, was at the Gilbert Police Department in Arizona. Body cam footage of her talking about her husband, Charles, because this is when Charles is alive, the kids are at home, and, and, the, and the bodies haven't uh, piled up yet. Let's take a look at that body cam footage. So I wasn't going to file a report, but my friend who is a police officer told me to file a report. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Looks like it's just good to have it on record, so. Yeah, okay. I got a little bit of info from dispatch. Yeah. Um, said he stole your phone. What happened? Your purse? Yeah. Oh, details purse. So yesterday, I got an argument with my husband on the phone, and he was in Texas working, and I found some stuff that he'd been doing, so he was really defensive. And so I took the kids. We spent the night in a hotel because I knew he was coming home. And um, so this morning when I took my son... When I went into the school to take him into school he was waiting somewhere and like stole my purse out of the car my whole purse so my phone my wallet my money my everything was in there so I didn't have I had the door locked but the sunroof was open because we have a service dog and he was in the car and I didn't want to my son was kind of throwing a fit I didn't want to get him both out of the car because it was a mess this morning mm -hmm. and we didn't have any of our stuff because this was the night in the hotel and he was out of his element and so I didn't lock the door for like the first time ever and he like Whatever, either got it out. Of, I don't remember if the door was locked. He got it out, or he reached through the sunroof and just got it. Okay. But then he started texting all my family and all my friends and impersonating me and tried and got my I friend lured her. over to the okay. house to meet mm -hmm. him, where he had like kicked in the door to get into the house and stuff. All right, hey, Ted, can you put a little more context around this and and, and tell us what else we've learned? We'll learn from uh, this tape because I know it's it's more than what we just showed everyone. Oh yeah, it's a lot more, and uh, I was pouring over it today. In fact, we're going to have a lot more on this tomorrow on this program. But basically, what happened? She Charles comes home from a business trip. She had canceled his flight, drained their bank account of thirty-five thousand dollars, and basically locks him out. Takes the kids. He comes in, um, and, and he is of course upset. He takes her purse. She goes to the police, wants her purse back because it has her phone in it. Uh, and this is just the beginning. She shows some of her nutty behavior in the in this. And you're going to see it tomorrow. Uh, it's it, it really is a look inside where they were a year ago, January, just before their divorce. Before, of course, he ended up uh, dead in July. Are we going to find out what she spent the thirty-five grand on? <laughs> and you know, normal yeah. people don't have this much interaction with police, Seema. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You're right. <laughs> well, normal people don't keep killing other people. So what do you expect? This is what's going to happen. And another thing that was going on at that time, Charles had successfully petitioned for her to go into an involuntary um, psychiatric evaluation. She finds that out at the police department while she's reporting her purse stolen, and she is shocked. She says, what? Well, and uh, I, that sure starts to unravel. out, Ted. I think you're giving us the PG version of what happened there. <laughs>